I'm doing a full review on a brand new book, Railway Modeling, Painting Realistic Trains from Ammo by MIG, coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name's John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If you're looking for tips and advice on how to transform your plastic models into something that you'd see on the rails today, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon and you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. So what resources or books have you found helpful in doing your own weathering projects? Please let me know in the comments section down below. One of the first live streams that I held on this channel back in December highlighted a number of the resources that I tend to use in my weathering background. All of them come from a science fiction or military background and they have all had an influence on the techniques that I use on this channel. Since then, two new resources have come on the market that anyone who is interested in doing weathering for model trains should really sit up and take notice. Now I will be reviewing both on this channel in two separate videos. Once both reviews are done, I'll be linking them to each other. You'll be able to find both of them in this playlist along with the live stream that I had back in December. The first review I'm getting into is Railway Modeling, Painting Realistic Trains, released this year by Ammo by MIG. It's part of their Modeling School series. I'm reviewing the English translation of this resource as was originally written in Spanish and is now available in both languages. It is a compilation featuring the work of five different modelers. If you want to see what some of the best modelers in the world can do with model railroads, this is definitely the book to get. Now the book is new and it may be a little hard to find, but I've provided a link to Amazon down in the description down below. If you click on show more, you can find the link. In all, there are 14 projects featured in this book's 148 pages, five locomotives, eight pieces of rolling stock, and one on weathering track and trackside scenes. That last one is the work of Mig Yeminis himself and worth the price of admission alone. And while most of the models in this book are HO scale, there is one example of an N scale effort, and at least one of the projects is narrow gauge. You'll notice that from the cover, the models featured here are of European models, but don't let that deter you. The techniques are transferable to any era, any road, any continent. That being said, the book does feature a North American locomotive, but stick around and we'll get to that in a little bit. Each section is about 10 pages long, showing how each artist went about the process of weathering their project from a clean model to the finished result. Through pictures and text, the artist details each step along the way and what products they used. As this is a resource from Ammo by MIG, almost all of the product's features are ones that their own company produces, but there are a few exceptions. In addition to some very detailed pictures of the process, many of the pages also feature real-world weathered surfaces that are directly related to what the modeler is working on. As you can see from the pages, this book covers several different areas and regions. We have a steam locomotive from Romania and another one from Germany, a burnt-out Hungarian railjet locomotive from an accident in 2013, various pieces of rolling stock from several eras, and so that us North American modelers are not left out, there is a BNSF SD70M that really shows how transferable all these techniques really are. So here's a few takeaways and a couple reasons why this particular book is a welcome addition to my resource library and why you should consider it having it as part of yours. As a recent publication, this book is as updated as it gets. It was published this year, and so the techniques you can try out with materials that are currently available. Second, this book comes from a company that is known for military modeling, and in its pages, it is doing exactly what I've been trying to do with this particular channel. The idea is look at other genres to help us improve our craft. Third, the diversity of techniques are a real strength in this book. I think this was one of the design considerations in that you're not seeing the same techniques and products used over and over 14 times in a row. And while there may be some overlap in a few places, and there are certain things in the weathering process that are standard, each of the projects feel like a different approach and are tailored to the model that is being presented. The real standout in this regard is how Dirk Robert weathered a HO scale Taurus railjet into a burnt out hulk from an actual historical event in 2013 in Hungary, which includes the residue from the foam that the firefighters used to put the blaze out. Now I do have a few critiques that I should mention, but that may be as a part that the book is part of a larger collection. 
Certain parts in the process are sometimes skipped over, but that's probably due in part of not wanting to have repetition. As one example, there is some really neat staining that is present in the BNSF locomotive that is only just simply lightly touched on that I would have liked to have seen a little bit more detail with. But all of the other parts in the book really do make up for that little flaw. Editorial choices are important. There's only a certain amount of information that you can pack into a given amount of pages. The other critique isn't so much a critique, but an observation. As this is a publication from Ammo by MIG, almost all of the products that are present in the book are also marketed and sold by the company. By definition, alternate products are not going to be featured in a book like this. That's okay, but don't look in this book for what some of those alternatives might be. These small concerns aside, I would put as one of the best specifically model railroad weathering resources now in print. It would be a great addition to anybody's library. As I mentioned earlier, if you click on the show more in the description down below, you can find a link to it on Amazon. This is the first of two book reviews that I'm going to be offering this month. Once that book arrives, I'll do a review on it and then share it with you and then link these two together. As new resources become available, I'll be sharing them with you as often as I can. So if you want more tips on how to get the most out of your painting and weathering projects, please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, if you haven't done so already, check out the other videos on this channel as well as the links down below on how to connect with me in social media. Go to my Patreon page and you can get involved in the creative process on this channel. So thanks for watching. Good luck and may you keep on track.